Good morning. We had a huge windstorm last night. The rest of the New York state got tons of snow. Here on Long Island though, we didn't get anything. Just a ton of rain and branches came off from the trees. Remember, Long Island is surrounded by, that's right, it's an island. Water, warm ocean water from the Atlantic. So we don't get any snow. But the wind has caused havoc. I thought for sure I was gonna lose most of my sheds, but it was just this one. And the doors tried to open on the bottom. Surprise it didn't lift up. Looks like I have a little bit of damage here from the flapping. But it held up. Look, even this rope came apart. Surprised it didn't fly up. Those cinder blocks work. My backyard neighbor, his power lines went down. My smaller Vivor shed survived, no problem. And that's not even anchored down. My fence stayed up too, although it's a little to the side, but it still stayed up. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another episode. So for my last episode, I uh, worked on one of the two hand gas leaf blowers that my friend Mickey gave me about six months ago. It's one of the last of my smalls that I have in the backyard that is yet to be looked over. You guys know what this is was one of the best-selling weed eaters. It's like a 25 cc gas leaf blower, super old. I mean, I remember five years ago when I first started doing YouTube, I had a couple of these things and they're a pain in the ass to work on. This one's missing like the cover here, the screw that's through the uh, <laughs> choke flap. I mean, there could be all kinds of things wrong with it. You know what I mean? This thing ain't worth like $20. I tried to sell this for six months for like $5 and nobody wants it, nobody. It's junk, it's trash, it's garbage. It's not even worth recycling. However, there are nuts out there who are nostalgic about this stuff and they'll spend money just to get their old one working again. You know, oh, it was my first one I ever had. I feel bad about throwing it out. And as you saw before, I can't throw out things very well either. I'm kind of a hoarder. Why would I just throw this out? This is something that if I'm driving on the street and I see this in a garage, I'll pick it up, you know? It'll cost more money and more time and effort to fix this than this thing is worth. Just like the last uh, Echo PB251 that I was working on, I didn't fix that either. It's also locked up. But I'm curious as to why it's locked up. Is it gonna be locked up the same way that the other one was locked up? The other one had the piston ring um, compressed into the uh, piston, which is a common problem with two stroke engines. You leave it out in the rain and the elements and stuff like that, water gets in there, corrosion, whatever, ethanol. Piston ring compresses into the piston and the piston goes up and down or rusted shut into the bore and it won't move and it's locked up like this is. Chances are if I open this up, the piston ring will be compressed in the piston and even if I loosened it to have it free again, uh, there's gonna be no compression. So it's not even worth the fix. But make for a kind of a cool video to disassemble this and take it apart. Let's first try to unlock this up and see if it at least pulls free. Free! Free! 
free. It is absolutely a beautiful day here in Long Island, New York, here in the middle of January. It's almost 60 degrees, while the rest of the state of New York has frigid cold temperatures and snow. I'm out here working on a weed eater. <laughs> anyway, as you guys can see, this is a very unique way that they designed this uh, hand leaf blower. The pull cord is on the back like that, pulls upward, right? Flywheel is actually down here. And I think this was designed where you could have some kind of mulching mechanism with a bagger and you would suck up leaves and stuff and it would mulch. And I can't even get this thing apart. So it looks like the flywheel runs this way, and I can see through these grids here that there is a flywheel nut. I'm gonna open this up, get like a socket and a ratchet or something, and see if we can uh, turn this thing and get it free. And then I'll, before I do that, I'll take the spark plug out and shoot some penetrating oil into where the piston and bore is to kind of loosen it up a little bit to help us with that. There are signs of water, moisture, corrosion. It's rusty inside. Spray some penetrating oil in the spark plug hole. Fortunately, the um, piston is at top. So there's not a lot of room for this thing to work. Prevent the uh, oil I just sprayed in there. I'll just put this on for temporarily just to keep the oil in there. there. See that? Here's the fan. Ooh. But turning the fan doesn't mean you, you can loosen the, uh, the piston or the crank. It looks like I am turning it though. Look at that. That worked. Let's check for spark. Cleaned off the spark plug, and now I'm going to pull this to get whatever oil was out of here. Nothing came out. Spark plug back on here. I'm gonna pull on this and hold it and see if I feel it's jolt. Ooh. I felt something. It's hard to ground, that's why I just touched it with my fingers. I did feel um, a jolt. So I think there might be spark. You know what? Take some carp spray. Spray it in here. Just a little bit of combustion. Put this spark plug back in again. Connect it. And just see if it could possibly turn over. Because I did feel a jolt. Which means we are getting spark. Which is amazing. We're ahead of the game now compared to the last Echo Leaf Blower that I did. There was no spark on that one for sure. I don't know why there's a screw holding the uh, choke flap open. I'm gonna have to take that out because that's definitely not stock. <laughs> it's probably missing the mechanism. Look, it doesn't even it doesn't even move it that way. It's supposed to, you know, when you move this, it's supposed to open and close the choke. It doesn't do that. That's probably why it's on here. Let's remove a screw here because you're not supposed to have a screw there. But I have a feeling that they put the screw here because this doesn't work with this anymore. So if you wanted to keep this closed or open, whatever, you would need the screw. Which is kind of interesting. See, so I can't I can't move this thing open now. So it's gonna need a new carburetor. How much does a carburetor cost? Probably six to ten, fifteen dollars. 
like I said, this whole thing ain't worth 20 bucks. Whatever, let's just shoot, shoot some in there. Close it again. Very easy to pull. Uh, I might have flooded the spark plug too, which is probably why. I'm gonna let it sit for a bit. While we're waiting for the gas to dry off the spark plug, I just got this in the mail from my friends over at Foxwell. As you know, Foxwell makes uh, OBD2 diagnostic tools and scanners for your car. This is something that I uh, have had in the past, but not made by Foxwell. It's a battery tester analyzer for your car battery with a printer. So it has these heavy duty alligator clip connections, has a USB flash drive, instructions and user manual. There it is. The Foxwell battery tester analyzer with integrated thermal printer and paper. And it comes with a micro USB or TF card, eight gigabytes. Pull out a little tab of paper. This is the BT780 battery analyzer for Foxwell. Rubberized side. And here's where you put the SD card. Connect the cable here. I've got a car battery just sitting right over here. Okay, you guys all see that? It says 12.56 volts. You got the menu here. You can do the battery test. View printer, voltmeter. Let's try the voltmeter. Yep, the voltmeter is just tell, showing you 12.55. Let's do a battery test. Enter. Technician three. Well, that was default, so we'll just go enter. Out of vehicle. That's right. Regular. Yes, it is. It's not an AGM or lithium. It is a top post, it's a regular. CCA's is 750, that's significant. This is gonna take a while. Seven fifty, enter. Battery seal number, no. Please wait. Battery near end life. Volts 12.55, measured at 313 CCA, meaning that's like less than half of what the CCA is it's rated for. Ooh, I missed something. Uh, ohms. State of health, 35%. State of charge, 94%. I charged this stuff like a few months ago, so it's holding its charge pretty well. So it's a usable battery. Let's press this print button. Ooh. Cool beans. So if you run your own shop or something, you can show your customer what you find awesome so this is great if you had a shop with employees check it out so you can like i said print you can do the voltmeter you can do different languages and you got your it could label your store name on the printout the technician as you saw you can enter names of your certain employees and technicians that are working on your car firmware update format card version information that's it it's very cool. So a great item to have if you own your own shop, for it to be able to print the findings of the battery test and analyzing the battery. Uh, pretty cool from Foxwell. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested in this. Now back to the video. So I've been pulling this for a while, not even close to turning over. Compression is too, low it's so easy to pull i'm not gonna pull
pull this too much more because I just found out I have high blood pressure. So I'm on meds for life. It sucks. What are you going to do? When you get older, it's what happens. Anyway, uh, I have a feeling that the piston ring is compressed inside the piston like most of these things when they are left out in the rain and the elements for a long period of time. So I think that this thing is Dunsky. Either way, I want to find out why. So I'm going to remove everything and see what we can find out. But we do seem to have spark. We have no compression. And I just have a feeling that... No compression because the piston rings are done. Holy cow. <laughs> the size of that Torx bolt. You see, some nut could want this. I could sell this for five dollars. <laughs> this carburetor just came right off and this thing just came right off these things are trashed and it's this usual type of uh oh look see so this is actually the throttle see and this choke lever broke see this blue part there was a there was a lever here to open and close the choke here's the uh, air fuel mixture screws I mean, this doesn't look that bad it doesn't look good but it doesn't look that bad I've seen way worse yeah fuel lines are done ski look at that look how brittle that is pops right off and the way they designed this, it's so hard to work on. You have to take, you have to take the whole sandwich side off. Intake manifold. You could actually see the bore in the piston. Uh -huh. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. There is some scoring on the piston, though. You guys see that all right? I'm pulling the rope a little bit. See the scoring? And then at the piston rings. See the grooves? That's why it has no compression. But the rings don't look like they're compressed though. I'm holding it to the light. There is some pretty good scoring. So I think that there's no compression to this thing, which is why we didn't even hear any signs of it trying to turn over. Had it turned over, I would have went on further to examine it. But to me, I think that this engine has no compression. Therefore, the only fun thing we can do now to it is take a better look at it by taking the whole thing apart. I don't know why out of nowhere it started raining. I mean, like a flash storm or something like that. Uh, so this thing was held together by hex bolts. They were all rusted. The minute I put a hex drill bit onto it, just rounded it out, completely rusted. And so I had to drill out some of it. It was a lot of trouble. And uh, this is the state of it right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to take it all apart. Uh, I, as you can see, if I could get $5 from selling a part from here, it's all worth it because I was about to throw it away. It's that junky. But some nut could use this gas tank from this model. You know, oh my God, I've had it my whole life. I've refused to throw it away. All it needs is a new gas tank. There you go. So if I can make $5 out of the parts from this, it's all worth it. I got to get into the garage now.
Okay, fellas, as you can see, I actually had the recoil starter off. It was good, but then I kept on playing with it, and the spring went bing, flew all out. I actually took some time and tried to put that together, but you know, if you do try to do that, that would drive you insane. So to save me from going into a room full of cushions, I decided to just leave it. Can't get too much money for that anyway. Anyway, recoil starter, flywheel, gas tank. Those are the only things that are worth any money. And I'll definitely get more than 10 or 20 bucks for the sale of those things. You know what I mean? So no matter what, this thing wasn't even worth five bucks. I was about to chuck it, but now it's worth maybe $20. Uh, I won't list pretty much anything else because it's all trash. Anyway, I found out the reason why it wouldn't start. This is the piston. As you can see, uh, one, two, there's two rings on here. They're both compressed inside. As you can see also, there's some significant scoring, right? Especially here, see? Look at the bad scoring right there, the deep grooves. Also penetrated the rings as well. So that's why we were having no compression because the rings are compressed, they won't come out. They're just stuck in there. And I could feel ridges, deep, deep ridges here. See that? So that's pretty bad. Not the worst I've ever seen, but pretty bad. And this was the reason why we weren't getting any compression. Therefore, even though we probably had spark on the spark plug, the lack of compression wasn't able to get it to fire or anything. There's too much air. So that's it. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, it, it's all trash, as I expected. Um, I probably wouldn't have had such a tough time taking it apart had it not been left outside. It was completely rusted at everything. All the hex bolts and everything were completely trash. Just gonna go over really quickly what I did where you guys can see the parts up close. There's the block itself. Cylinder head. I mean, I guess you could kind of sell this, but look, scored inside. Can't sell it, forget it. Here's the crankshaft. There's a muffler, the fan. Flywheel's in good shape. You get some money for this. Not a lot, but some. Decent magnet. Good pawls. Good gas tank with cap. No leaks. No cracks. 40 to 1. I did get spark out of this because I felt it. <laughs> so this uh, magneto still good. I'll throw this in my bin of parts in case I run into something that I may need this exact one. They interchange these parts with a lot of models, especially with the Weed Eater brand. Not that you see too many Weed Eater brands. Some of the plastics, of course, I couldn't get any of the bolts out, uh, maybe one or two, but there's like five or six other uh, hex bolts that were completely rusted through. The minute you try to put any torque on it, it would just round out and I drilled out some, but it was just wasn't worth the effort. So I just manhandled it all apart. Uh, the chute can be useful in some instances. Uh, this is the top part of the uh, engine block. I guess you would call this the sump, <laughs> even though it's a two stroke, but that was the cover that was covering up where the um, cylinder head was. And that's about it. Here's a handle. Um, this model didn't really have any other kind of mechanism for throttle. It was just that, it was just that, this, this thing here, the red thing is the throttle. You know, you, you manually open it up and close it for slow and fast throttle. As I said, the blue thing was broken. The lever is gone. This was the choke lever. So that's it. 
I uh, got a box of the parts that I wanted to keep, some of the things that I, I'm gonna list on eBay. The rest of the carcass is in that bag. So as I started this video with just throwing the leaf blower away, now I took it apart, found out why it was busted in the first place and it wouldn't start, and kept some of the parts to sell on eBay. Hopefully I'll make more than $20 out of it, which is far more than I would have gotten for that. Hope you guys enjoyed the disassembly, tear down, autopsy of why this Weed Eater 25cc hand leaf gas leaf blower doesn't work. No compression, rings were compressed as usual, a lot of scoring on the piston. Also missing a few parts to get it started anyway. So it wasn't worth it to fix it because the engine's toast, but we salvaged some parts and hopefully we can make a few bucks off of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Mowers and blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.